<clears throat> a solution to the problem of the window size is to let the sample density to determine the window size. K nearest neighbor method uses that principle, where we grow the window until it contains a predetermined number Kn samples, so that the probability estimate becomes probability of probability of x is given by kn over n over vn, where vn can be calculated using the distance of the uh, most distant sample to the point x. Also, uh, with k nearest neighbor methods, we can uh, directly uh, estimate the posterior probabilities so that uh, we can directly classify the uh, samples. So, given a number of classes, omega j, such, uh, such as omega 1, omega 2 to omega c, and the set of training samples where each sample belongs to a single class, suppose that we place a volume around the sample x and capture k samples within that volume. So, if ki of that samples belong to the class omega i, then we can estimate, estimate the joint probability p, x and omega i using the following expression. So this is the joint probability of x and omega i. Then, the posterior probability of an unknown sample x belonging to a specific class j can be calculated using this expression. So we have uh, the posterior. Um, so we 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 have the joint probability divided by the probability of uh, x being in every class. So that is k k i over k. So given a, uh, as an example, let us have a dat data set with two classes, where the samples of the first class are 0, 2, and 3, and the samples of the second class are 6, 9, and 10. Uh, here we are expected to estimate the class label of sample x equals 5. Uh, and use k and n, k nearest neighbor method with k equals 3. So uh, we are to find the closest three closest samples to this point x equals 5 and then the number of classes, number of samples uh, within the first class and the number of samples within the second class are to be used. So, if we take k equals 3, then the three closest samples to 5 are 2, 3, and 6. So, 2 and 3 are from the first class, and 6 is from the second class. So, in this neighborhood, the first class has two samples, and the second class has one sample. So, When we calculate p omega 1 given x, that is k1 over k, so k1 is 2 and our k is 3. So for the second class, we have omega 2, uh, probability of omega 2 given x, that is k2 over k, that's 1 over 3. Therefore, when k is selected to be 3, the sample x is classified in the first class. Note that in the above example, the estimated class changes when k equals 1 is selected. So when we select k equals 1, the closest sample is from the class 2. Therefore, uh, the point x equals 5 is classified in the second class. Uh, that is because, so, uh, 
the estimate class changes when k equals 1 is selected. That is because classification with KNN method heavily depends on the density of the samples in the feature space. As we get more and more samples, the, our density estimation and our posterior probability becomes much more accurate. However, if the samples are sparse uh, or uh, scattered in the feature space, or if the features are high dimensional, uh, the number of uh, and if the number of samples are low, the density estimation with KNN becomes problematic. So, when the number of samples are low, the samples become more sparse, basically. Or uh, if the features are high dimensional, we have a larger space to uh, fit our samples. So as the dimensionality of the features increases, uh, the sparsity of the uh, samples increases by the power of the dimension, d. So uh, the, uh, with high dimensional inputs, high dimensional uh, feature space, and low number of samples, KNN uh, becomes very, very inaccurate. Also, when a new sample X is to be classified with KNN, the distance of the new sample to all of the training samples needs to be calculated in order to determine the closest K samples. Since that process is computationally expensive, suppose that we have a million uh, samples uh, in our training set. When a new sample arrives, where we would like to de decide the class of the new sample, uh, in, if we are using KNN, we need to calculate the new sample, distance of the new sample to every other sample in order to find out the closest set of samples. Uh, so, uh, when we use KNN as a classifier in order to uh, get around this computational and expensive uh, calculation, uh, we would like to store the training samples in a tree structure so that we can decide if a new sample is close to a certain uh, training point. Uh, this tree structure is called KD tree and it speeds up the uh, classification process by a lot. Thank you for watching. Uh, this week is uh, uh, completed. See you in the next lecture.